to Human. My name is Jess and I am so excited that you're here and that you're listening. And I got a good one. I got a good TMI story to kick this bitch off. Let's go. So I recently went on vacation with my two grandmas and my cousin. If you have not heard the episode all about that, it is episode number... Episode 151. I had... (laughs) I spent my birthday in St. Lucia on vacation. It was so fun. And I was like thinking in my head, like, what's a TMI story that I could tell right now? Because I have so many and I've started writing them down in my phone. And I just laughed so hard because I just searched up TMI in my notes and it said March 6th. So that was like a while ago at this point. And it says, Pooh Talk, all at Asian restaurant, taking pulse on our bowel movement status. This is from my vacation. I like went to look at like the calendar and I was like, where was I on March 6th? Like, what does this even mean? Who was I even with? Because honestly, like, I feel like poo comes up so much in my life in conversation, especially like doing this podcast. It's just like, it's coming up on the reg. And so this specific instance was when I was on vacation with my two grandmas and my cousin. She's 19. My grandmas are like 75 and 81. And we were at like an a la carte restaurant on the resort. It's an Asian restaurant. And it was like a couple days into the trip. And so literally we all ended up going around the table and just like saying where we were at because my iconic grandma named Jane, she was the one who really planned the trip and brought us all together. And she was like not doing well on the first day that my cousin and I arrived. Her and my grandma had already been there for a couple days. And so then Jane, Jane and my other grandma, they hit the sauce. They hit the sauce on the day that we were arriving. I think they were t- already tired of being together, just the two of them. So when my cousin and I showed up, they were turned. And so the next day, my poor 80 year old, 80 year old grandma had diarrhea. And she goes, it's because I was mixing the rye and the red wine. She's like, I got to stick to just the rye. I can't be mixing my booze. And later on the trip, she started drinking vodka. I was like, girl, you are going off. But so we're literally at this Asian restaurant and my grandma's like, I'm good. I'm, I haven't really had any more diarrhea. I'm like, I'm not good. No, I think at that point I was good, but I was drunk at the dinner. So I was like, about to not be good because I did not have good poops for the rest of the trip. But I just thought it was so funny that we're all like literally sitting around a table and just, just taking a pulse. How's everybody's bowel movements? How, where are we at? Especially when you go on vacay and you eat different food and you drink alcohol, you end up not pooping very well. Okay. So thanks for joining. That's how we kick off our episodes. But today I actually want to talk about taking risks because if you didn't listen to last week and if you didn't listen to my St. Lucia episode, I've been taking some risks. I've been doing some different things. I've been putting myself out there and I just moved out of my parents' house. And not only that, I am really building a career in a way I never imagined. You got to like fucking let go and let God take the reins, baby. Like, the way I've actually been able to make money from content, from social media, from basically the foundation I've set with this podcast came about in such a different way called UGC content. There's a spot on my website, humantumanpod.com that like explains about like my, it doesn't explain anything in, in text, but you'll be able to see by the style of video. I just never expected my career to come about in a way of making money, but like with social media, but like not on my own social media. It's just interesting. It's just very interesting. But there's been some videos where I've had to, I've had to work, bitch. I have had to really put myself out there, learn new tasks, and it is stressful. And my boyfriend and I were out for dinner recently celebrating his sister's birthday. And they were talking to us about like our life and our career and our art because Josh makes music and I obviously do the podcast. And I felt bad because like, I love them. They pay for they pay for our meals when we go out with them. Like they are the absolute best. And I was like, I'm sorry. Like we don't have the money. Like literally like I could pay for my own meal. I would just be getting the cheapest meal on the menu. And she's like, no, no. Like I want, they're like 30. They're like, I want you guys to have a good meal. I want us to like ball out, go to a fancy cocktail bar. I'm like, okay, sure. If you're down. And my friend said to me the other day, she was like, Jess, I know you feel bad that they're paying, but like, imagine if it was your sibling. And I was like, oh, true it's my boyfriend's siblings my boyfriend's like whatever but for me I'm like oh my god that's so nice of you like you don't have to pay for me whatever but like if I was my brother I'd be like yes bitch pay for me (laughs) but my brother does not ever do that that's okay we are too close in age for that my boyfriend and his sister are like five years apart but anywho they were talking to us about our careers and stuff and they were like don't worry like I know that you guys are gonna have money and be able to like return the favor later but she's like you guys are literally 23 she's like I did not have much money at all at 23 like 
like she's like just wait till you're in your in your late 20s and I started to reflect and I was like you know what Josh and I are both pursuing between the two of us four fucking careers between our both of our creative careers and the both of our like quote unquote nine to five safe secure careers so I was like one out of the four is better gonna like pop off and help us bring in more money like I want to take these guys on vacation the fuck and so what the fuck was my point (laughs) literally why did I go on that tangent I think my point is that like we're working hard and it takes some time but it also takes takes so much risk and it can be really stressful and so I'm taking risks in all these different areas and one risk (laughs) that came up recently for me was this company that I've worked for before I've like recorded UGC videos for them they will send me a script and then I will record it and then they do everything else they do the editing it's it's fun it's cool it's awesome um and they have a product that's a makeup product I'll just tell you about the brand I love them it's Carpe I wear their deodorant it's incredible literally I would have sweat stains in this shirt if I was not wearing them right now but they also have an SPF primer and I had it I just like never used it because makeup products overwhelm me and so they were like Jess we want you to do like a get ready with me makeup video like here's the script and the script was so fun and the only thing I was terrified about was putting the actual makeup on my face because in the script she's like we do bronze and highlight and blush and I'm like I don't own any of those things I don't own I never and literally days before this I was walking on the streets of Toronto and I was like oh bitch all these girly pups are so dressed up and they look so hot and they have such nice coats and they have like all the makeup on and I don't ha- know how to do any makeup on my face. And like, don't judge me if you're watching this and you think it looks bad because I'm new. Okay. I'm new. It's also very like natural glowy look. <laughs> and so I was like, holy fucking shit. Of course I want to do this script. Like it's so fun. I enjoy it. Plus I live in downtown Toronto absolutely get your bag girl you know like I gotta bring in that money for rent (laughs) now it's like the stakes are higher and so I have a friend who knows how to do makeup so well so I was calling this friend every fucking day being like what do I go buy from the grocery store the grocery store (laughs) what do I go buy from the pharmacy I was like looking at Sephora and this friend was like don't go buy your new shit from Sephora when you've never worn makeup and I fucking did it and I delivered and the brand just sent me the final version of it and it looks good and I'm like holy hell I was stressed because I got it on a Thursday the script and it was due on a Tuesday so I was like and it was over Easter weekend so I was like this turnover has got to be snippity snappity quickity quack and I fucking delivered and that's the thing is that like challenging yourself to do hard things allows you to realize that like you are capable of so much more than you think you are I just did a sweat and tonic class the other day and I was like fucking sprinting on this treadmill because the woman was guiding us the teacher was telling us to like just give her and so I was like whoa like I can do things and I can push myself in ways I didn't know were possible and the most stereotypical way was like run a marathon and like I'm running a 10k in May um I'm a little nervous because I have not been running a lot and I have always thought like oh if I push myself to run a marathon like that's pushing myself to do things that like I didn't know I could do and it's like no 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 like you can run a marathon yeah maybe I'll run one one day but I'm like I I am not in a mental space to like be serious about my recovery and to like really take care of myself and nourish myself properly. Like I'm not running a marathon right now, but now I'm sitting here and I'm like, bitch, there are so many different ways that you can challenge yourself. There are so many, so many different things that you can do to like, you know, experience a little bit of risk, experience a little bit of thrill and then sit with yourself and be like, oh my God, it either went well or you failed. And if you failed, you fucking learn from it. And maybe it wasn't meant to be yours anyway. I have moments with this podcast where I get stressed because I'm like, am I doing the wrong thing? Like it hasn't reached quote unquote success, but it's like, shut up. Like I'm getting success in other ways through the foundation I've set with this podcast. Like you're good. You're fine. Everything is all okay. But sometimes things won't work out for a specific reason, an extremely specific reason. And I love my boyfriend so much because we will hang out sometimes and be like, I'll cut it out, but I just burped so loud. (laughs) It was awesome. If my mom didn't listen to this podcast, I might've kept it in, but I left a burp in one time and she was like, really, Jess, that was so rude. And it is kind of rude. I heard my boss burp one time and I was like, "Mm, please keep that to yourself. (laughs) He's also a man. So I don't know, maybe that has something to do with it. But what the fuck was I saying? 
if you try something and you fail, it wasn't meant to be yours or you're meant to work harder at it. Truly. That's what I think. And if we don't push ourselves to the point, oh, I was talking about how I love my boyfriend. I love my boyfriend because when we hang out sometimes, we'll talk about the fact that like we are risk takers. And I think our relationship works because we both are extremely passionate people. Oh, this pillow behind me is making me sweat so much. Um, We are such passionate people. And we have the same level of drive and enthusiasm for our lives and for doing things that really challenge us and help us grow as individuals. And I was putting together a TikTok the other day of a video of us from two years ago celebrating his 21st birthday together versus this year, us celebrating his 23rd birthday together. And we were drunk. I was dancing on a table at a bar. (laughs) in that first video from his 21st birthday versus now for his 23rd we were at other ship doing a sauna and a cold plunge and I'm just so grateful we can grow together like that and I think that's a huge sign of a relationship working especially for like if you can grow and it doesn't mean it's going to work forever I've seen a lot of women post on social media about like leaving long-term relationships and I'm not sitting here being like my boyfriend and I are going to always grow together and always be on the same page and always blah, 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 blah. cuz like you just never know. I feel at peace knowing that like if I ever felt like this relationship wasn't right, I have to trust that and vocalize that and I will be shocked if one day we we don't feel like we're meant to be together anymore cuz I think he's fucking awesome, obviously. But like right now like we've been together for it's our third year of celebrating birthdays together it'll be our three-year anniversary in may and it's just like insane to grow up together because we met when we were 20 we're so young still and so just realizing that like we can evolve individually and then also as a couple and like we love doing different things and different activities in our lives now than we did when we first met but like we both enjoy those new things and we both challenge each other and he's like you you challenge me so much with alcohol he's like I never even thought about any of these things but now I'm starting to realize what I want my relationship with alcohol to look like and he pushes me in so many ways and It's just like awesome and I just think life is so fucking cool and fun when you put yourself in situations that you don't know how it'll go. You don't know what the outcome will be, obviously safely, Um, and you get to see what you're capable of, truly. Like me moving out, such a risk, such a risk. Do you know how many fucking times I've moved out and moved back in with my parents' house because it went to shit and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I got to move back in with my parents. (laughs) Like it could happen again and I'm taking a risk, but it's like my parents even said they were like this time feels different they bought me a queen bed like I have a queen size bed now like I'm an adult it's so funny the things that make you feel like an adult it's so weird like me and my roommate being so happy that like I have a bathtub and well she has a bathtub too but like I have a bathtub because that was my non-negotiable and she's got some in-suite laundry because that was her non-negotiable it's like these are adult things and this is like a very coming of age style podcast and it's really fun and it's really cool and it's a challenge. And that's the thing. Like we can't ever strive to like never have stress in our life because there is such thing as good stress that makes us feel rewarded and makes us feel like we have purpose and we need like things to propel us forward. Like I have been going to workout classes so often and it's kind of a non-negotiable for me because like they're expensive yes but first of all everything is expensive (laughs) and second of all they're like a non-negotiable for my mental health because I don't have any structure to my day so if I don't make myself structure I will feel sad I will feel like I have no purpose I will feel like I have no direction and so it's like just knowing I have to be at yoga for 3 p.m makes me be like okay chip chop let's go we got to get all this stuff done before we go to yoga like you create your own fucking reality so let's take some control over it I feel like I'm a motivational speaker love you all okay I hope you have a really good rest of your day and if you enjoyed this episode please share it with a friend share it on social media spread the word in some way because I just want to like I want to make people laugh and make them feel a little happy. You know, that's just like the goal. This is why I do this. This is the thing in my life I make zero money off of and I don't get a lot of gratification from, but I simply just fucking love doing it. And I feel like you can feel that. I feel like, you know, you know when someone enjoys something so much that they're just going to go out of their way to spend time doing it. Okay, that's me. And if you are a longtime listener and you love this show, I love you so much. I appreciate you so much. Tell someone you love that like, hey, this podcast is pretty funky fresh. And yeah, I'll talk to you very soon. Take some risks. 
take some risks and then tell me what they were. Submit it at human human, not at human, but www.humanhumanpod.com. Tell me what your risks are. Tell me what you want to hear more of. Tell me a TMI story and ask me a question. Okay. Do all the things. I'll see you on the gram between now and then. Goodbye.